is uh, it's okay. Uh, actually, I, I tried twice already to to come to conferences in India, and uh, three times the charm, and now it, it is the charm. And I'm really glad I'm here. So, so I have room in my backpack to bring stuff back. I didn't bring a computer. I have I brought the iPad, and uh, this is you know, how the iPad does uh, presentations. So it's not a beamer. I hope it works well. Otherwise, I'll have to write. So. Okay, maybe I have to, okay. So you, you are in the right conference, okay? It's not a dynamics conference. I just wanna uh, give some motivation for my work. Uh, a group G is said to have the how more property if all uh, matrix coefficients, if no, you know, any representation with no invariant vectors uh, are C0 maps, meaning uh, this function G to phi G of SX psi for any SX psi vanish. And this is like a very uh, dynamical property of the group. Um, so don't worry because our examples are everywhere. Okay, so uh, simple D groups have this property that uh, all matrix coefficients vanish at infinity. And uh, this actually, the Howmore property was very useful in, uh, in proving all sorts of uh, theorems in uh, dry groups. And it gives, uh, for example, a very easy proof of the following theorem by Zimmer that GB. Uh, a locally compact group with a Howmore property, then any continuous uh, map homomorphism from F from, from G to H to any locally compact group H, the image of G will be small. And some observa observation called it theorem by Zimmer. And he actually uh, saw this as as saying that simple uh, simple D groups are uh, really simple. Like algebraically, they're simple because you know they map take the group structure to the group structure with no kernel. And topologically, they're simple because they map, you know, homeomorphically wherever they sit. So this is like how Zimmer saw them. And this motivates the following definition, and what we're gonna talk about today mainly is some closed image problem. So a group G is said to be sealed, like really closed, if under any continuous homomorphism into any also topological group. Now, I don't assume H to be locally compact anymore, the image of G is small. So this is our new property. And for example, yes, it's true that also simple groups over local fields have this property, uh, in particular over uh, CP and the semi-simple. And even uh, in the paper of Bader and Gelander, uh, they, they studied quasi-semi-simple groups, which you can have automorphism of trees and, and so on. But they have some paper where they generalize how more property and, and they get and and the question is, uh, what other algebraic groups have this property? And the answer is uh, the following. If I have some connected algebraic group over a field K, now I will assume the, the, the characteristic is zero, then the group G is sealed if and only if the centralizer of the Levy part is anisotropic. It's a fancy way to say that the centralizer of the Levy part is compact. And it's a fancy way of saying that the Levy part is basically semi-simple, and it acts with no uh, fixed points on the unit field. So, uh, no, for the whole group. The whole group has a, a, the group is not reductive, yeah. Exactly, for the reductive group, we have a, a reductive. So this, this is a generalization, and for example, um, we just take what we know, and we add this, you know, unipotent part, and it still works. This group, these groups are still sealed. Sealed. Uh, it's yes, yes. Products of two sealed two, and even an uh, infinite product. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's see what's not going on, right? Because we don't have R there. So we know that we have R, and we have a non-closed image, right? We have this irrational winding around the torus with a non-closed image, and. What's the problem here? Why, why is this not good besides the fact that it's not sealed? I can pull back a topology from the image back to the domain. Okay, so I take an open set in the torus, has this infinitely many lines, I pull it back, I say, oh, this is an open set now in my domain, and I get a new topology on the domain, which is still a group. Topology, it's still household, the map is injective. 
And it's a weaker topology because, I mean, notice that any open set here is unbounded. So it's definitely not the same topology. This must be, okay, so this is what's uh, going on and motivating a bit uh, more subtle uh, um, property called minimal. So we call a group G minimal if the topology it has is minimal. So we start with the group with a topology and we say that it's minimal if there's no weaker group topology on it. Okay, so for example, the real line is not minimal. We just saw, right, that we can pull back. Uh, does not, yeah, see that's quite, does not. Uh, don't believe everything you read. Uh, and, and equivalently for G uh, Polish, it's just really the same as saying that any inject, injective map is Polish. Okay, so, so this is a closed image property as well. And some examples, so compact groups, of course, every image is closed, sealed groups, in particular compact groups are sealed, not R. Uh, what about SLNZ? Does it embed non-closed somewhere? It's in many places, right? QP or uh, profile transmission, whatever you want. Uh, what about QP? Can you do this torus trick with QP? Yeah, you can do that. And then it will be not closed. So uh, it's a question I'm asking you, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's just a warm up, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, and, and these are not, yeah, not and not. So both not, and why not QP? I mean, uh, first of all, there's a general fact which minimal and abelian must be compact. QP is not compact. But uh, an easy proof for, for, for locally compact abelian groups would be just look at their Bohr compactification. It embeds inside, so it can't be closed. Uh, so if, and another uh, fact, if G is minimal, its center is minimal, and particularly it's compact, abelian, so if we're looking for examples, we need groups with compact centers, okay? And SLN Z is compact center, but it's not an example. So what does work, here's a, a theorem by a, a Gotho and Omori, a theorem back in the 70s papers. So if G is a connected, a finite algebraic group over R, then G R is minimal, if and only if the center is compact. It did not state in this language, but it's basically what they're saying. So. For real groups, having a compact center is the same as being minimal. Okay, so for real groups, this is if and only if. Fast forward uh, many years later, and we get the same thing for uh, Jabari groups over local fields with characteristic zero. Uh, again, if the center is compact, my group is minimal. So this is uh, exactly analogous to, to Omori and Goto's results. And uh, actually, uh, we do not uh, we do not have case analysis and we do not uh, use um, their results in order to get this in general. We actually prove uh, using structure theory and, and we will now see a quick sketch of uh, how this can be done. Okay, so for example, of course, a group which is not sealed but is minimal will be this 2p star times 2p. Uh, in the theory of minimal groups, there's, right, there's this long history between the 70s and the 20s, um, there's, there's a whole theory of minimal groups. No one talks about algebraic groups, but they talk mainly about you know, R star, semi-direct R, and other generalizations of. Uh, but now we're back to algebra. Uh, so let's see how we prove uh, the minimality. Uh, so we start with this group with a compact center. First, we find this solvable group uh, with a compact center, and the solvable group is co Okay, And if there is a Borel, you take the Borel. If not, you take know, the solvable part of the minimal part and in this group. Uh, so how does minimality of B will imply minimality of D? Suppose I have an injective map from G to H. I want to show that the image is closed. So B is minimal. So F of B is closed, meaning this will be house closed. B is co-compact. So G mod B will be compact. This is compact. This is house source, then this map uh, the image here is closed, and then I just, you know, go around this way, and I get the image of this. Okay, so minimality of B will just imply minimality of G. So really, in order to prove minimality, I just need to prove the solvable groups. 
great. So let's prove for solvable groups. And solvable groups, again, have this wonderful semi-direct product. So if P is some torus, and U is this uh, unipotent group. And the proof uh, for minimality will follow from these two uh, frames. Frame one is the following. If I have some weaker topology, and when I say weaker, I mean weaker than the k points of topology. Okay, we're over k, so implicitly the topology, I mean, you know, uh, as if matrices is over k. So all weaker topologies coincide when restricted to u. That's frame one. And the second claim is that and all weaker topologies coincide on the quotient b module. So the quotient topology is just pushing the open set. So if I have two uh, different topologies, uh, they may be different, but they may coincide in the quotient. They may be different if they, co they coincide on, on the subgroup. Anyway, if it happens both, then uh, the topology will be the same. So in order to really proof sketch uh, something you'll believe me for a solvable group, let's assume that U is a, a billion and everything will be much the same. Okay. So, okay, let's assume even more that the action of P and U is irreducible. Okay, so we have like a really simple case, a torus acting irreducibly on some uh, vector space, and we have the group P semi-direct product Q, and we need to show that it's not. So what do we do? We have P acting uh, irreducibly on U. Uh, we use Shor's, Shor's lemma, and we get that this map from P to the endomorphisms of U is actually uh, interpreted as a scalar multipl multiplication on U. In what sense? Ah, I didn't see you. I, that's okay. So why do I, why am I looking for scalar multiplication? Sorry, we know that U is not is not minimal, right? A vector space with additive topology is not minimal. It's not compact and it's a billion. But we have another fact that we know that topological vector spaces of finite dimensions are unique, right? So it is minimal, and the reason is that we have another constraint, which is uh, the the action or the multiplication. The scalar multiplication needs to be continued. So if we just kind of find something like a scalar multiplication, which will act on you, we will have this minimality again. So how do we get the scalar multiplication? The torus acts on you. And we can cook up from this torus acting on you a uh, scalar multiplication. But it won't be the whole uh, uh, multiplicative group acting. It will be some analytic subgroup. And when I mean analytic subgroup, I mean that P is defined over K, and the endomorphisms of U, which will, is actually isomorphic, we can show it's isomorphic to a, to a field, K prime, which is some finite extension, and P maps into K prime, into the multiplicative group of K prime, as an analytic subgroup. And we show that multiplication by some analytic subgroup is enough to, to ensure minimality. So you don't need to have scalar multiplication by the whole field, just by some, you know, Small subgroup of the multiplicative group, and you're fine. Uh, so that's enough for me for this. Okay. Uh, for the other direction, we want, so now we know that all topologies on U are the same. We want to show that topologies on B module will be the same. Notice that B acts on U, U is normal, right, the unipotent part, and U is abelian. So of course it factors, you know, it's in the center of the, of the action. So B module now acts on U. And here again, I really use the fact that you is a billion, otherwise B mod the center would act on you and I had to do some other games. And then we get this embedding of B mod U into GLU. Okay, and we call that here the weak topology is equal to the usual one. So this is really GLU, the regular GLU that we know. Then we have strong topology maps to the weak quotient topology, which maps into, again, the usual topology, which is strong. So we have this kind of sandwich which will make uh, both the parties. So we showed claim one and claim two. Claim one meaning parties coincide on you, and claim two meaning parties coincide on the quotient. And there's a famous uh, lemma called Merson's lemma, which says that uh, if we have some subgroup, it doesn't even have to be close either. Just some subgroup where both the parties coincide on it and on the quotient, then both the parties are the same. So this is... Uh, this proves the theorem for B, and proving for B will prove uh, for U. Great. So where did I use uh, the characteristic assumption? Because I want to appeal to some people in the audience here, which are really uh, experts on positive characteristics, and maybe they can help me um, 
uh, finish this uh, research. So we had this map from T to the endomorphisms of U uh, using the Schurz lemma. But this map may not be separable. And recall that we needed the image to be analytic. It's usually not a problem. For, for all cases, I can always go to even a smaller, uh, a smaller uh, local field. A K analytic, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you, and the second, the second idea is that you, the you input and radical might not even be a, a split, I mean, or even defined. So, yeah, so, so we, we can, I, I'd be happy to have this talk with you uh, later because there's a few ideas here uh, which I'm thinking how to, how to exploit uh, what can be known. And maybe and maybe actually get this. Uh, and so do lots of groups, yeah. Yes. So so I I have tried to this. <laughs> I can I actually uh, say that and and yeah that's that's another reason I'm I'm, I'm happy to be here and and, uh, and this work uh, Ray Kiel Gopal as well. And, uh, and so using you know, a tiny bit more of structure theory, we want for general groups, uh, we get minimality with, for all groups with compact center. So the seal property, uh, we can talk about it next time. Um, let's, let's finish now with our weekly almost periodic simplification. So we have a topological group, and every topological group has this uh, universal compact simplification, which is a semi group. And if I'm locally compact, they're actually embed inside. And when I mean semi-group, uh, I mean semi-topological semi-group. So it's S, but that the multiplication S times S is separately continuous. So usually in topological group, we have to be continuous on both uh, arguments. To be semi-topological, we need to be only continuous uh, separately on each argument. And there's a universal one, meaning any other compartification will factor uh, through it. The timer is not working. Please help me, uh, I need to finish. Um, so here's a uh, theorem, it says 24, it's because I had a proof and I noticed a little bit of a bug, which I fix it now, so it's 24. Uh, let, let G be a connected finite algebraic group over a local field. Again, this is our setting, so it's zero. Then we have this uh, uniform uh, uh, universal compactification, the WAP compactification. Then for any S, any S infinity or any S at all, right? This is, of course, true for S and G. The set S times G equals G times S. This is very useful when going to representation theory. This will give us uh, the following um, our result, saying that matrix coefficients of these groups of GK, uh, now I assume that they're minimal or that they have a compact center, you know, this fancy way to say compact center now. For minimal uh, GK, any uh, matrix coefficients of a faithful irreducible representation will vanish at infinity. And once again, we have another uniform proof of how more, because take some simple group, uh, take a representation, factor it to, to its uh, ir uh, sum of irreducible representations or integral of irreducible representations, and they all they're all faithful because the group is simple, and vanishing of matrix coefficients will just vanish for them all. So here we have another uh, uniform proof, but it's a bit more subtle. So like, we, we can get a few uh, other results from this, which are not you know, general how more for all unitary computations. And it follows from these two uh, uh, quick observations is not observations. These are observations by, by Veach and, uh, and, uh, and a few other people like in the, in the 70s and 80s. So matrix coefficients of the unity representations will vanish. But the weak operator topology uh, the closure is just uh, the one point simplification of zero, right? Because these matrix coefficients are exactly 10 to zero, just means that they tend to zero in this topology. And the weak operator closure is a semi topological semi group, and then we can use the, the lemma we did before and uh, play around with the theory of uh, topological semi groups and, and get this uh, theory that we had. And uh, that's what we have for today. Thank you for this talk. Are there any questions? Uh, hi, yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, so in characteristic P, I guess, I mean, one thing is the, the solvable group, of course, may not split as a semi-direct product of a torus against a uniform. That's one difficulty. But I, I saw you didn't understand you were passing to the solvable case, yeah. right? Yeah. How did you do that? I mean, in, while also saying G mod B was compact, but what if you didn't have a Borel over the base field? What, what was... You, you, so you take, so you have a minimal parabolic. If you don't have any parabolic, you're, you're compact. Sure. You, you have a minimal parabolic. And minimal parabolic have this, um, so if P is a minimal parabolic, it has, it has this decomposition state. Right. So this is a minimal parabolic that uh, yep. unipotentially works. And this is actually a centralizer of a code. Right. And so I take this. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. And this will be coconut. Okay. Any other questions? This universal compactification is it related to the kind of compactification that uh, Spencer Pramana was referring to? Or, uh, what happens, for instance, at SL to Z? So SL to Z, it's it's a uh, uh, I think it's a crazy compactification because this universal compactification is like topological. So I think for SL to Z or for discrete groups, it might actually be the the Stone Chair compactification. I'm not sure. Yeah. Or, or, or okay, it's a Samuel compactification. It won't. It's better, but it's still bad. Improves in it. Yeah, this this is actually really nice. Yeah, it's it's a one it's a one one line proof. Um, so so I'll. Yes, yes, it's a one-line proof. I, I will, I'll write it down now. Um, so G has how more, and it has a map into H, which is locally called back. And H has this, uh, you know, regular representation. Right, so uh, lambda. Okay. Um, okay. And now, so we look at this representation. So we know that rho of G. I cannot see this. Uh, <laughs> okay. Go back to the right. We have G to H to the regular representation of H. And this general gives me a representation rho of G. So we have rho of G sitting inside unitary representation. And now we know that G is is uh, is how more meaning the matrix coefficients of this representation vanish at infinity, meaning that the image here, that meaning that the what closure, so if we take the weak operator closure, is exactly rho of G union zero. Okay, and this is compact. If this is compact. I can forget the zero, and I get that rho of g is locally compact. So if rho of g is locally compact here, it means it's closed, because locally compact subgroups are always closed. And then the pre-image will just be the image of g inside. So it will be closed. So we, we have that rho of g is locally compact, meaning it's closed. So gamma inverse of rho of g is exactly the image here, and it will be closed. Yes. Yeah, so we, um, what, what we got from, from this observation from Howard Moore, that rho of G is locally compact. Because rho of G union zero is compact. So if I just forget one point, I'm still locally compact. And then locally compact uh, uh, subgroup is always closed. In a topological group. Yeah. 
Yeah, local, yeah, exactly. Locally complete. I'll call it, yeah. Exactly. So, so I have that row of G inside here is closed. And I just pull back the image under the regular representation. And this will give me the image. Uh, I'm saying that it's closed. Yeah. I mean, if G is locally compact, it's closed. Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, no, it's a, it's a regular presentation. I took the regular presentation. Yeah, the regular representation from H to, to uh, I think, L2 of H is also an embedding because for the regular presentation, you can actually, uh, you can actually see that, that the image is homeomorphic. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, and that's because that the, the the regular presentation has this matrix coefficient vanish zero again, right? And again, you do the same trick. So lambda of h will, must be locally compact. Must be homeomorphic. There are no further questions. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you, Raj. So let's be back before three. So we have to always wait for three minutes. I wouldn't say that, I would say that I would say that. Let me see the... the <laughs>